Welcome back to In Business. How much time do you invest in networking? Whether it's for business or for professional development, the best networkers have the greatest success. In today's business world, four out of five businesses are started by women, so the females entering the networking game is definitely on the rise. The question is, do both genders network the same? To help us with the discussion of how men and women network differently is Steffi Black. Steffi is a coach and founder of Connection Corner, a virtual networking group designed for women. Steffi has spent much of her career in communications, in a, including a decade at Global Television as a reporter and producer. In addition to helping individuals with their careers, Steffi also dedicates time to working with elementary schools and delivers kindness workshops to students. Welcome, Steffi. Well, David, what a nice intro. Thank you very much. <laughs> you you, <laughs> are you make most, me sound so important. You are most welcome. <laughs> uh, Steffi, I want to start off with the with the kindness uh, workshops yes. that you're doing before we get into our uh, mm -hmm. heated debate mm -hmm. about uh, men and women and how they network differently. Tell us about the kindness networks. Uh, what are sure. they and why did you start them? Um, first of all, there's a, there's a website called randomactsofkindness.org, mm -hmm. and it's around the world. And it was stat started by a not-for-profit organization, and they basically wanted to spread kindness. Uh, my daughters are at a parochial school, and we do a Shabbat dinner on Fridays. And on Fridays, I would ask them to go and do something kind, because mm -hmm. I wanted it to mean something to them, not just sure. the tradition, but what is behind Shabbat and, and being a family. And the Hebrew teacher overheard me a couple of years ago and said, what, what is this you do with your kids? You ask them to do something kind? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> what, how does that work? <laughs> I'm trying to do it with the kids. And I th thought, and she said, would you come and speak to our students about this? Mm -hmm. And I thought, at first I thought, I don't know, you know, uh, do I, uh, sure, I can. And then I thought, what an opportunity. I'm such a big proponent of kindness mm -hmm. in the schools. And like the person you had on earlier talking about goodness in the workplace, isn't yeah. that a wonderful concept? When it's carried through, it makes a huge impact on the pro-social values of a classroom. Sure. So I went back to the Random Acts of Kindness website. I worked with some teachers on a curriculum. And I first started going into schools and just doing one workshop, which was nice. And it was an hour. And it was everybody felt good. But then I realized that to make an impact in mm -hmm. the tone of a classroom, I had to do a curriculum. Mm -hmm. So I created, with some other research, I created a monthly curriculum to go into schools and actually change the tone of a classroom. Because it does. There was a famous study in Vancouver that took kids from the ages of 9 to 11. Mm -hmm. And for a month, they asked them to perform three kind acts a week. The whole social values of the classroom changed. People got wow. along better, and it made an impact. And more than one off, you need to keep, keep the consistency going. And I'm big on, as most people are, and most teachers and principals are, I'm big on character education. Sure, and, and the random acts of kindness, mm -hmm. they are, uh, they're random outside of the classroom as well, not just certainly, inside the classroom. Correct? Certainly, people can go out. It depends on how the teachers design it. We give them a curriculum. They can go out to hospitals or go out and raise money through lemonade stands or pick a new peer at recess. We'll give them a template, but it is up to the school themselves how they want to take that template mm -hmm. and make the make the impact bigger. We want to do a kindness tree in one school. Oak, in Oakville, there's a school called Holy Family. Mm -hmm. And the principals agreed to the concept of doing a kindness tree where each student will write a leaf on a leaf and put it up on the wall and what they did in that kind act. And then at the end of the month, they can present the impact kindness head on them because they'll keep a journal too. Excellent. So, so let's get to the uh, the point at hand here, what, which is networking between uh, men and women. Certainly, uh, is it your Pleasure. is it your assertion that mm. men and women do network differently? Um, not just my assertion. Uh, some <laughs> researchers will say that too, David. Well, you're the only one here right now, so you're going to take the heat. For I'm it. on the spot. I'm the spot. <laughs> there is a gender difference now. The playing field has changed, uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you where the difference still comes from. For women, there's still a glass ceiling in some cases, right? There's not as many women in leadership positions as there are men still today. There's still the issue of housework, and whether you're equitable in your home, David, I can't speak to that, but women I do still, all the cooking. Do you do I, all the cooking? I do all the grocery shopping. Well, yes. you're an exceptional uh, man, and thank, I, I've heard thank that you many for times. That. And I'd like a note for you to take <laughs> home to Joanne for I that. I will do that for you. <laughs> but for most uh, households, women still do the brunt of the, of the housework. And that means that sometimes they don't take the time for professional development outside the office because of time. And that means they also sometimes don't do positions within the company that gives them more visibility. In fact, in the Globe and Mail this weekend, what was the cover of the Globe and Mail? That women are still doing the brunt 
of the household work. So as much as we've leveled the playing field, that still means you have to rush home and do things where y your husband might be more likely to take a client out to a hockey game or play a golf game out but on that's, the field. But that's a choice women make. Not always. That's still uh, something that's generally accepted in some traditional marriages. Mm -hmm. As far as we've come, and I have a very fair partnership like yours where uh, Mark gets very involved in helping out of the house and we take turns but I make network a very strong priority yeah. some, to some females there is still guilt involved about taking so much time for themselves mm -hmm. does that make does do you understand that concept of, um, of I, I, I do understand it but I, I also know that there are many more relationships today mm -hmm. now whether it's completely balanced mm -hmm. is, is up for debate whether it's completely sure. balanced or not but there's a, I mean, men are taking uh, parental leave and yes. staying home with the children. Women are moving into that, uh, that larger role of being the main breadwinner. They're they're making more money, and the man is staying home and looking after the children and doing the housework and doing the grocery mm -hmm. shopping. So it it is changing, and uh, so I don't know where anybody gets the statistics now that it's. It, I don't believe that it's it's that lopsided anymore. I think it, if it's lopsided, mm -hmm. it's about choice. But you just said it is changing, and that's my argument. It is changing, but it hasn't changed far enough. But I don't right? think, I think it hasn't changed because, because of choice. Do you think so? Absolutely. I think that, I, well, I think women, here's, a, here's a, another argument. I think women are, are sometimes shyer about selling themselves, Canadians and women, the combination, yes. right? Yes. Men are more likely to get to the point. Right. Listen, hi, David, nice to meet you. I, you know what? I'm looking for a new job in finance. Who do you know? Exactly. They're much more direct. Right. Women have, are much more about, and I'm saying some, yes. not all, but we seem to be, want to like the people we meet more. We're not guys as don't care. yeah yeah. We're we're just, guys don't care. Can you help me out? We'll just, do, me we'll just go Let's with have anybody. Have a beer and help me out, all right? And then leave me alone. I'm not going to follow up with you. Whereas, was women generally like to will swap information about you know what? This is where I got my hair done, and yeah. and you know what? This is where I get my my kids where they get where they go for babysitting, and this is and I'm happy to help you with this. We generally sometimes have deeper networks. The men will have more. I need this. Can you help me? Do 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 we tend to have more impact, more long-lasting relationships. But I, I understood someone, to, and, and I believe yes. it was a professional that, that uh, so it's a phys physiological thing mm -hmm. that women have a nurturing gene. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's built right into the DNA. They have that nurturing gene. And that's why they end up being you know, the, the way they are as you're talking about, well, you know, I, I, they ask a lot of more questions. Mm -hmm. They want mm -hmm. to know a lot more about what's going on, which is why women are much more successful in business mm -hmm. when they start their own business. It takes them a little longer to get there, mm -hmm. but they're usually there a lot longer than, than guys are because they'll ask for directions, just like yeah. we, won't, we won't ask for, <laughs> direc ask we for won't directions. Ask for directions in the car. So We're certainly not going to ask for directions when it comes to business because <laughs> we know it all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so does that have anything to do with, with what you're finding in working with women is that they just, they just need that nurturing more? Some, some. Once again, the, the playing field has leveled. But yes, we generally want to be more caring and have more empathy when we meet another person. How can we help you? Whereas a man has no, some men don't mm. have trouble saying, how can you help me? Let's get, let's get straight to the point. Right. The woman was more like, you know what, I cannot, not only will I help you with the job, I'll help you with the sitter you may need. Now, there's one danger of that when you're, when you're too empathetic, sharing too much information. TMI right. short form, right? <laughs> In this day and age, right? We all get short forms because of Twitter. That you have to be careful. If you're asking somebody for help with a job, don't share all the messy details of your relationship mm -hmm. because that doesn't make you that's seem That's going to muddy the waters. <laughs> that's going to muddy the waters. So maybe somebody's going to say, I don't want to help <laughs> yeah, you because right. you're a mess. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I don't want to bring you on because I know you're going through a heavy divorce. Even though they won't say they're like that, right. psychologically, they may worry that maybe this person's not all together. <laughs> so, right? So information shared should still be at a professional level when you're looking for a job. Right. Right? You know, and women tend to compare themselves more than men do when they're out. They tend to ask questions like, how did you handle your boss? Right? Where men don't really care how you handled your boss. Right. Or the difficult situation. Now, now once again, this isn't all, but that's been typically the case. And it is changing. The way women and men network is coming closer together.
Absolutely. Right? We're going to continue the discussion okay. on the other side of the break. My guest is Steffi Black. Stay with us as we continue our discussion on how men and women network differently. And we'll be talking more about it when we return right after the break with more In Business. Welcome back to In Business. Men and women are different in many ways, but shouldn't we all be the same when it comes to business? Apparently not so. When women get upset, they tend to cry, and when men get upset, they tend to yell. One is no better or worse than the other. It's just the way we express emotion. So how does it work when we network? My guest to guide the conversation is Steffi Black, the founder of Steffi Black Coaching and an all-female networking group called Connection Corner. Okay, mm -hmm. Steffi, here's mm -hmm. the, the, the big question. So why this chick-only networking <laughs> event? I was uh, waiting for that. Yeah, I mean, was waiting why, for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to feel offended as a male that I'm not allowed to come in to your group because I know I know what happens when men yes. set up a men's only group. Yes. Women want into it, mm. and they and they fight tooth and nail to get mm. into it. Mm. Somehow, I don't think you have a lot of guys fighting to get into the women only group. But why? 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 Why do you feel that's necessary? Not at this point. Not at this, Not at this point. point. So you did want to come. I might and, be the and, first. Uh, one. You might be the first. I might be so, the first one standing outside with a sign exactly. saying equality, why only equality women? for men. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, now you must have a really good reason. Mm. Why a women's only networking? A really good reason. Mm -hmm. It was simpler for me. I started the group to help out women in transition before I became a coach. Mm -hmm. I knew of people looking for jobs, and I thought, you know what, we all have a network. We should be helping these women. Mm -hmm. uh, helping my friends, who were the majority, were females. And I would send out an email, so-and-so is looking for a job, and another person I got involved would help me too. And from there, I thought, we can do this better. People are busy. They don't want all these meetings. They don't want to go to night events. But we can help them virtually, and I decided to only hold one event a year. Right? right, which is happening this week, and you can't come to. I'm sorry about that. Maybe one day. So I started it because it was simpler for me, David. Mm -hmm. And being a woman, maybe I felt more comfortable with starting a, wo but a the, woman's only. The group. event that you're having mm -hmm. uh, this weekend is mm -hmm. not. That's not a virtual event. That's, that's the virtual group which has one meeting a year. One. So this uh, is my one, -on -one, one meeting. So yep. here's one of the criticisms that I've, yes. I've heard from female executives, senior. Uh, uh, females in the business world is that when it's an all-female group mm. it ends up being a, a, a men bashing organization, an estrogen filled, estrogen filled uh, chick party, hen party, whatever they want to call it. Yeah. How do you build structure into your group so that it doesn't become one of those or is that okay for it to be that? Do you know what? Uh, because it's strategic, I'm a former marketer, mm -hmm. and I believe in, in getting right to the point when you have a need. As I start off, the beginning of the each time we get together, here we are. You're here to network. Networking is for life, not just for one job. So how as you come here, don't be shy. Introduce yourself to every person and tell them what you're looking for. That's why we're here. Right. And I post on LinkedIn every month an immediate need that somebody has, whether they're looking for a job opportunity, a volunteer opportunity, or a need to just find something simple. Mm -hmm. We are encouraged to help each other. So it could turn into, boy, your clothes look great. Where did, where did you get that suit, David? You look right. very handsome. And what you about see, that gel in you your see, hair? You see, guys would never <laughs> ask that question. Some might. I, Some I, might. I, I, I'd, I'd be heading to the other side of the room if somebody <laughs> asked me what kind of gel I used in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that can well because women can have have that that communication style of 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 the rapport, right, and not being shy about asking those personal questions. Right. There can be aspects of that, but generally, out of that event, people come out with new connections. And because I'm a coach and facilitator, I will make sure that if anybody has a need and they didn't get it met that night, mm -hmm. I will follow up with them and say, how can I help? Now, you mentioned that uh, when, when women do get together mm -hmm. and they start talking or they start asking questions, you know, they'll ask, well, you know, that's nice. Oh, those are cute shoes. Where did you get oh, the shoes? You. And, and you know, your hair looks really good. And I love what you've done with your makeup and that kind of stuff. Do you find that you have to coach women uh, around that? Because that takes a lot, I mean, from a guy's mm, point of view, mm. that takes a lot of time and energy, mm. and we're going to use up a lot of networking time mm -hmm. talking about stuff 
that doesn't matter now or is it just me because I'm a male that it just doesn't matter to me no I think it's a way of gaining rapport in some mm -hmm. cases not every woman does that but some women are more comfortable giving a compliment and think of it on a total emotional intelligence level it makes someone feel good to hear a compliment but right sure. so, yeah. so, so you look great I haven't seen you in a year you look great tell me what you're up to then from there you can get into that person feels warm towards you already then you can get into you know what I'm looking for a job right now. Do you happen to know anybody in the uh, IT field? Right. That person is more likely to help that one who gave them the compliment. Absolutely. Right? You right? want to you want to you want to build that rapport. I I understand that part, but do from the from the sounds of things it mm. sounds like women take a lot longer building the rapport and is that one of the main differences between men and women is that guys guys uh, as you mentioned they want Don't to cut worry. through sure so we're going to say you know how about those yeah. jays you know are yeah. you watching the hawks uh uh are you watching pittsburgh who are you voting for rooting for in the hockey yes. and and that so where guys might talk about sports or fishing or something that they read in the newspaper women will talk about more personal things yes then but do they take too long to, in your opinion okay, when you work with women opinion. do they take too long to get to the point can be can take too long. If there's shyness involved, we often, once again, as Canadians and women, and not generalizing, yeah. can be more low-key and humble about our strengths. Even when I first started hosting Connection Corner and I had this room of women, I, was, I didn't want to stand out too much. I was there to help other women and I was a little shy about saying what we were about. You shy? Even as, I know it's hard to say. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but that was my first time. I didn't want to be too out there and make it all about me. And mm -hmm. I had to own my power right whether you're female or male when you're out there and you're networking you have to be as a coach i tell people to have a self intro what is it you do and how what are you looking for so i coach people to put together a self intro hi i'm steffi black i'm a life and career coach and i'll help create a destined path for your life and career mm -hmm. as an example so sometimes as we're more self deferential you have to get into this, the Sasha Fierce, as Beyonce calls it, right? <laughs> Own your power. <laughs> so that's what, that's what women haven't traditionally always done, and now I'm seeing it more and more. Whereas men sometimes don't mind saying, I am great at this. You know what? Yeah. I am the best uh, IT guy out there. I know search engine work. I know Google AdWords. You won't get a better person than me. Mm -hmm. That's been our difference traditionally, women, because women can be seen as too aggressive if they're really strong and confident, right? We can do it to ourselves if we see a woman who's really assertive and strong and confident. Even yeah. how women dress, yeah. we can be hard on that. Yes. Whereas I feel you but should have But who's more hard on women, women or men? I, I think sometimes women. Yeah. I think sometimes women. I'm not a conservative dresser. I like color, as you can see. Yes. And I, I think it's important to have your signature style. You have to look at the workplace. If you're working at a very conservative workplace, you have to honor that. But as an entrepreneur and a networker, you should speak to your signature style. Mm -hmm. And that makes you feel more confident, mm -hmm. right? So it's about owning your power, which men have traditionally been comfortable doing. It's now making women, and there are lots who do, but some of us who are a little shyer about owning our power. But there, I guess there must be a delicate balance with between uh, your own personal style, what you're comfortable in, mm. and how you want to present yourself out in, in public. Mm -hmm. There could be a, a discrepancy between the two. Yes. So you have to make a decision about what you want to do Yes. There. If you're going for a job interview, you have to find out the company's culture. I mean, that's just the, the normal research, and right. you have to respect that. If you have tattoos all down your side and the, and the company you know, is probably a conservative bank, they're <laughs> not going to want to see that sleeveless shirt at the time, right? <laughs> and, and maybe banks are more progressive now. Right. But it's just honoring that. But in your personal life, right. you, know, you, can, you can wear that. Though we have to be careful in the social media world now, right? Excellent. What you post on Facebook. Steffi, do you still have room at the, uh, <laughs> at the networking event for <laughs> women that want to? If you put that sign down that, that says... I'll put the we, sign okay, down. Do you still that, have room? Then I how, might just have room How can people get information? You're, they can get information on Connection Corner by visiting my website, Steffi Black Coaching, and that's S-T-E-F-F-I Black Coaching.com. Excellent. And, I will, and they can email me, and I will send them any information they want. Thanks so much for coming my in, pleasure, Steffi. My pleasure, Great to have you here. Thanks to our sponsors and our guests this week. Hashem Shaifi, Ryan Quello, Neville Pockroy, and Steffi Black. Remember, you can stay up to date with the latest updates on business by following me on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash David And if you have an idea for this show, send an email to me at dkvojcik at rogers.com. Come back and join us next Monday night at 8 p.m. We will be here, we will be live, and we will begin business. Have a good night.